My memories in the Katakram camp, we had a difficult life there. We were facing a lot of difficulties. We were uh, uh, having a scarcity of the water, job, electricity. My father uh, is a retired teacher. He was a teacher in Katakram. And he has taught uh, a lot of people around here. And sometimes people respected me because of him. It was a desert when we came at the beginning in 2007, when I first started here. But now, everywhere I go around this area, this project, I can see the sign of living inhabitant, you know. All people back to here, that means a lot, and it's a big change, it's, which is due to this project. This is the story of a remarkable journey that has empowered the Kurdistan region of Iraq to become one of the most dynamic regions in the Middle East. It is a story of pioneering spirit and determination. A story of commitment to a place and its people. It is the story of the Kurdistan Gas Project. A decade ago, gas from the Kormor gas field began to flow. The first stage of the Kormor field development was completed in a record 15 months. The plant now produces gas to supply the power plants in Chem Chemal and Erbil, supplying 80% of the power in the region. As the Kurdistan Gas Project proudly celebrates 10 years of production, its impact can be felt throughout the region. It, th this plant has, the, has a great impact on the nation. It's supplying gas to two major power plants in the region, and that's their supplying power to the nation. People have a better quality of life nowadays because of the increase in the supply of power, because in the uh, increase of the supply of, 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 of LPG, because of the increase of the supply of the uh, petrol for the, for the region, for their cars. The international consultancy, PwC, found that the Kurdistan gas project has contributed between $10.7 and $18.3 billion to the KRI economy over the past decade and created more than 2,200 permanent jobs in the region. The most important result of the Kurdistan gas project until now has been obviously the increase in production of natural gas and its application towards the power sector in Kurdistan. It's helped us shift to cleaner source for power, um, and it's also helped us increase the, our energy output. Um, and, and, you know, aside from the, the social and economic benefits so far, the priority has been you know, more sustainable, cleaner power for, for the Kurdistan region. The Kurdistan Gas Project is operated by Dana Gas and Crescent Petroleum, with partners OMV, MOL and RWE. The real promise of the project has been the ability to deliver power to more towns and villages in KRI than ever before. So in 2007, we were having uh, discussions with uh, the KRG and the Ministry of Natural Resources, largely around oil policy and the, and the, uh, the draft oil law at the time. And we had the uh, pleasure to meet uh, His Excellency Najirvan Barazani at the time. And he described the challenge that the government faced with new power stations being built by private investors. And yet the gas supply was an issue. And despite promises from the federal government, there had been no gas supply. And so he asked if we could take on the challenge to develop the gas, Hormor and Chamchamal and also assess their potential to meet all the electricity requirements in Kurdistan as well as beyond that for industry uh, and, and potential export. So we took on that challenge in 2007 and we achieved the production, alhamdulillah, in just over a year in 2008, October. We, we managed to get first gas. That included building a 185 kilometer pipeline from the Kormor field to the power stations in Bazian and Erbil. That was over very difficult hilly terrain and the entire area of course has been uh, fought over uh, in a number of conflicts over the course of the last decades so it was filled with minefields and unexploded ordnance. 
So there was a, a huge challenge in order to get the project uh, completed. Uh, since production started in 2008, we have never uh, had a break in, in operations. We continued, we stayed, we continued to produce, uh, whereas many of the other international companies withdrew their staff at the time. So we had to put our own teams together, including with local contractors like Carr and Zozik and, and, and Nokan, and a lot of people from our own uh, teams to implement the project. Natural gas is considerably cheaper than diesel. It is also much cleaner. PwC determined that the Kurdistan gas project has helped avoid 29 million tons of CO2 emissions over diesel use and estimates that the region will avoid more than 77 million tons of CO2 equivalent in the decade to come, thanks to cleaner burning gas. That goes a long way to reducing the region's carbon footprint. The project has made many more things possible in the Kurdistan region of Iraq in recent years as well. The future looks even brighter as the Kurdistan gas project looks to triple production in the coming years. We've already just gone through an increase of 25-30%, uh, which has already had, uh, alhamdulillah, an impact on the local power generation. Uh, we intend to increase further, uh, and we have plans in partnership with the Ministry of Natural Resources, uh, Dr. Ashti and his team, to increase gas more, to hopefully cover all of the needs uh, of Kurdistan for power generation. We have two stages. Uh solution actually ahead and identified. First is actually expanding the gas, production gas supply, about 250 million cubic feet additional gas, and we anticipate that to be hopefully within 18 months, two years. That will make us, together with other sources of gas available, we should be self-sufficient for Kurdistan in terms of the 24-hour power supply to our people and some power supply to factories and industry. Stage two really is building up the infrastructure for distribution beyond the region uh, to other parts of Iraq and perhaps for exports. So we're at the moment actually working on studying the infrastructure, pipeline infrastructure for export. And that will be ultimate goal to actually have say 10 BCMA or more gas export. Ultimately, as this project grows, as the capacity grows, as the scale of the project grows, I think we'll see greater benefit to the people of Kurdistan. We'll not only see, hopefully, 24 hours of uninterrupted power, um, but we will have gas resources that we'll be able to provide for other services. At the end of the day, um, we have a duty, one, to provide better services, um, and this will help us provide better services. Uh, secondly, the ability of, of a project of this scale to provide jobs and to provide technical know-how. I think this will help us develop you know, much stronger technical capabilities in-house um, for this project and for hopefully future projects down the road. Well, first of all, my thanks go to the people actually. The people on the ground worked, persevered with the project. And of course, to the management of the project, and that is uh, both Danagas and Crescent jointly manage this project actually persevere with it and of course I thank my team in, in MNR who worked diligently with Danagas and Crescent to actually make this happen. I can say for uh, me and most of the people that work in here uh, uh, without the Crescent and without this project it was impossible to uh, achieve that we have achieved now. As we proudly celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Kurdistan Gas Project, we look forward to a bright future and to continuing the journey together to make this an even better world for everyone in the KRI in a partnership for progress and prosperity.